Hi, welcome to another one of my videos. Um, this one will be on my solar accumulator, solar generators, they seem to be known in the trade. Um, I don't like the name solar generator, it doesn't generate anything as far as I'm concerned, it stores, so I tend to call them solar accumulator. Um, I've shown this before, this is my battery bank, it's um, 3S16P. Uh, cheap Chinese back cells, all tested, all have a capacity of somewhere between uh, 2,130, I think is the minimum out of these. Um, and I forget what the maximum is, it's about 2,289, I think it's this one here, I think is the highest. Um, they're all rated at 2,150, um, and they're, they're about that. Um, these will have been grouped. Um, using repacker.com so each cell each pack of um, 16 is within a milliamp which is more than accurate that's more accurate than my ability to measure the capacity so that's close enough I thought today what I'd do is just um, I've had some questions on how I'm going to join these together I'm not welding I don't have um, facilities to weld and to be honest I probably won't make many packs like this so it's not really worth my time investing in a welder. Um, so what I've decided to do is use the 5 amp um, fuse wire method, which is this stuff here. It's very fine. It's rated at 5 amps. I have tried to blow it using my bench power supply at 5 amps. It doesn't actually fail at 5 amps, but it does fail at 10. So I'm guessing it's around 7.5 amps. These... Um, rewire these are from uh, UK domestic rewirable fuses it's a very fine wire you can just see it there um, it was notoriously bad at blowing when it should have done and people if uh, on a bad circuit where people were overloading the circuits they would put nails in and all sorts of stuff or the wrong gauge fuse wire um, this is a 5 amp for designed for UK domestic lighting surfaces uh, circuits um, because we use 240 volts we can drop our current so a 5 amp fuse is a UK domestic lighting circuit but what I'm going to do for these is all the cells will be linked to bus bars using this very fine wire. The idea being all the cells will share the capacity. So the fact that it's only a 5 amp connection between the cell and the bus bar is irrelevant because um, the combined capacity from all 16 in each group would exceed the... Um, fused rated output that I'm going to be using. Um, I'm going to use 60 amps as my maximum um, current draw on these. Each cell is rated at 2C maximum discharge and my minimum is just under um, 2150. So I'm going to self-impose a 60 amp limit on this pack. That way these cells are never discharged at 2C which is their maximum rating and it should give a fairly long life which is the idea um, being that it's designed as like a backup power it'll be kind of like in storage for a lot of the time so i don't really want the cells degrading so what i've used um or oh, i've got a collection a, a, a collection of components to put together for this um i've made up some of these bus bars um and one of these this curly thing here which actually is going to be the negative tail out of the uh, battery pack um this copper is actually made up of this which is in the uk our domestic um this is one is called two and a uh, 2.5 tne so it's twin and earth and it's 2.5 because it's 2.5 millimeter cross-sectional area through the conductor um, what I've done is I've stripped this back. Um, you can see in the sh it's kind of like a, a blue would be the uh, the negative. Um, this is the modern unified wiring. Um, it used to be black negative and red for the positive, but now we've gone kind of European. It's now blue for the negative and brown for the positive, which our flex uh, flexible cable has been for years anyway. Um, the central one, which isn't sleeved, is the earth. So that's right, that's 1.5 millimetres. So in this conductor, you've got two 2.5s and a 1.5. So what I've done is I've stripped all the insulation off. Obviously the earth, don't, you don't need to strip because it comes out from the outer sheath. 
um, I've clamped one end of a big long load of this, about four feet, in the chuck of my battery drill set at low speed, and the other end in my vice and my workshop, and just started it up, and basically it's twisted it up and it's wound it into a coil. So I've done some quick calculations just on the back of envelope stuff, and each one of these is capable of handling over a hundred amps um, with, and it's four inch length here. Um, if you pull a hundred amps through this, it'll drop um, about twelve milliamps, uh, twelve millivolts, which is not very much for this. So each one of these is going to be multiplied by three on the battery pack. So this will be used to link say the positives and negatives together like that and i will use three of them like bus bars linking across like this um, once they're all fitted um, i'm going to solder the very fine wire between the cell bottom here cell bottom and there and then there to there and then there to there and then there to there and then this one either to there or to there makes no difference you could go either side i might even alter alternate them just to uh, spread the load a bit and that would be then join um the positives of this group of 16 to the negatives of this group of 16 which would give me my link through and i'll do the exact same on the underside joining the positive side of this group of six, uh, group of 16 to the negatives of this group of 16 this one would then be my output, my 10.8 um, nominal output um, on the positive, and then the underside here would be the 10.8 on the negative. The next thing I want to talk about is this rather curious bendy thing. Now, I've manufactured this basically to make it easy um, to get the power from the cells to the BMS. Um, so on this particular um, group of cells. This will be the negative output and this is the negative tail. So um, those holes will be for small zip ties which will come up, loop over and then go back down um, and then the other end will be used for securing the bus bars across um, but it will also secure this in place so there will be a looper zip tie going round through all four of those. This will then have the 5 amp fed to it from each individual cell so that will be the main collection area where all the power is fed from the cells um, and it will then come up through here I've bent this so that I can then mount the BMS directly here so that that will solder on at that point there so the BMS will be kind of attached to the cells I might insulate it off just very slightly um, the idea being that it'll give a nice rigid mounting point for the BMS so that the flex for the BMS can then come off here and obviously the flex from the positive can come off of this side they can join together and I'm going to use an um, a 60 amp uh, radio controlled kind of car connector for the time being to see how that works uh, this is the charge input here um, once the BMS is fitted, however I'm going to fit it, I've not worked out how to do that yet, um, then the balance leads can go to the cells in the necessary places. I've had um, a couple of people ask um, whether joining the output, all the outputs from the cells, through uh, just the 5 amp link wires on these group of cells will be sufficient. Um, they've asked, will there, will there be a failure? between these in theory no because I'm only drawing 60 amps each one of these little link wires will be capable of handling 5 amps actually greater than 5 amps probably closer to seven and a half amps so the combined output here through the 16 cells being bear in mind that the current will be shared between all 16 cells um, the combined output is exceeds the 60 amp limit that I'm going to put on this system and so it'll be fused at 60 amps so there shouldn't be any problem with current handling capacity. So that's where I am at the minute. Um, I shall just update when I've done a little bit more assembly work on this, just to show how I'm getting on. Thanks for watching.